Hi, Soul Family. Can you hear this song? I'll spend the rest of my life leaving footprints all over town. Couldn't look at that one. I will spend the rest of my life catching my breath, letting it go, turning my cheek for the sake of the show. Now that you know this is my life, I won't be told what's supposed to be right. So, goes along well with my dreams and the messages that have been consistently coming forward. I've got an eyelash stuck to an eyelash. Hmm. I think that's a message. An eyelash stuck to an eyelash. So, we're going to have to look that up right at this particular moment. Because I know that eyelashes are um, falsity. So, if you guys ever want a, a really good source to find information about your dreams, and you don't want to, like if there's something, I do dream analysis, but um, I like the dream bible for simple, simple things. So, eyelashes. Allure, appeal, attractive, how, depends on, you know, Clearly, it's about making yourself more beautiful, right? So eyelashes stuck to eyelashes. So you've already got eyelashes, which are which are something that protects your eyes, right? So I've got eyelashes stuck to eyelashes. Um, feelings about an interesting person, what an interesting person you are. Um, like someone that is, a, like if you've got exceptionally long eyelashes, you would be a very alluring person right? Because that's what women want. We want long, thick eyelashes, right? You know those guys that have eyelashes? I have friends that, guys that have eyelashes that are so long and thick that they trim them. I'm like, really? Really? Why is it that you got those and I didn't? Because I wouldn't be freaking trimming them, that's for sure. Um, fake eyelashes, of course, is about using something to make your views more appealing or needing or depending on something else to be more interesting than uh, about yourself than you being your actual genuine self. So I feel like that's what it is. I've got eyelashes stuck to eyelashes. Somebody who's um, feeling like they need more than who they are, which is not the truth, which is something we've all learned as we've ascended or we're learning, right? That we don't have to please anyone else but ourselves. So stand, trying to stand up on my own two feet, this conversation ain't coming easily. So this is a breakdown between two people and I'm trying to stand up on my own two feet without relying on or listening to what everyone else has had to say or what my family's had to say or even what my false eyelash need had to say. The fact that I felt like I needed to be more than I, I am. Um, I love this song. It's actually one of my most favorite songs. Pink's um, rendition. A Million Dreams. There's so much wrong going on outside. I close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting up for me, that I call my own. Through the dark, through the door, through where no one else has been before, but it feels like home, like I'm ready to go, right? They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say I've lost my mind. I don't care. I don't care. Call me crazy. We live in a world that we design, which is what I believe, right? We, we, we create our future. Because every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be, a vision of, of the one that I see. A million dreams is all it's going to take. I'm going to cry. I get emotional every time. There's a house we can build. Every room inside is filled with things from far away. Special things I compile, each one there, to make you smile on a rainy day. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy and they can say we've lost our minds. I don't care if they call us crazy. Run away to a world that we design because every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head and million dreams are keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be, a vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all it's gonna take. A million dreams for the world that we are gonna make. However big, however small, let me be part of it all. Share your dreams with me. You might be right, you might be wrong, but say that you'll bring me along. 
to the world that you see, to the world I close my eyes to see. Every night I lie in bed. I love that last line, oh my God. <sighs> Say that you'll bring me along. This is somebody who hasn't been able to experience that, who hasn't either been allowed or hasn't allowed themselves to actually get out there and do to do that. But but there was somebody who has has got that vision in their in their eyes, right? And they want to go. <laughs> I'm bringing sexy back, says Justin. <laughs> Okay, so after my dreams last night and after the, the, the thing that I watched between the cats yesterday goes along with everything that I've actually been um, believing and, and struggling with over the last six years. And uh, as I said, I've had a lot of people interfering, coming in, trying to have, you know, spin a tail this way or spin a tail that way to try and um, get me off my own course of, uh, of what spirit has shown me and what my heart has known and believed. So I watched this dream last night and uh, it was, I was comfortable in the dream all night long. Yesterday's dream I told you guys about was awesome too, right? Somebody actually making their own choice based on, on what they truly felt in their heart. And it was a tough decision for them to make, but they, that they did it. And, and it was tough because it was either that decision or the job or that decision or their friends or that decision and their family, their religious family, right? It's tough stuff. But they realize that, you know, I've been lying in bed dreaming about this and I haven't been able to do, I want to go, you know, you're leaving, please don't take me with you, right? So last night's dreams were, were um, kind of like a recap and uh, the person was watching and somebody went and s there was a couple that liked each other very much and the boy went to ask if they could play with these coins. Remember the coins? And the mother said, no, that's a family game. That's not a game for her. That's a family game. So, um, like I said, a lot of it has to do with family. A lot of it had to do with, um, to me, with a company like a, that was very controlling. Um, and uh, I've been shown all day today, it's been a quiet day, a day of introspection. And I've been shown personally myself that um, I wasn't wrong, I was right. Uh, I've gotten consistent messages. Spirit is nothing but consistent, right? They're not gonna go this way, then that way. And it was always the same thing. The one man that stood between and uh, tried to cause confusion and upset and, and I was told it was a brother. And uh, I've been trying to be very compassionate and, and put aside the five and a half years that were taken, right? because I, I see ahead of where we're at right now. And I see a problem between the brothers, between the prince and, and the Grail Knight. And there's a fight and there's um, un understandable anger. And yesterday it was justifiable righteous, righteousness, uh, righteous um, karmic settling, right? And yet, because I, have seen it. I saw it ahead of time. I saw it before it, all, before it all happened seven years ago and six years ago, actually, six and a half. And uh, when it all played out and didn't realize it would be going on this long and, and it did. And um, I, I've, I've, I have a post I want to share with you guys. Um, I feel like um, an empath, a true empath, is somebody who is able to be hurt by somebody and understand why they did what they did, right? So, however, uh, what I saw was the one that had did had done this was was ashamed of what they had done. They were sorry, but I don't know if they have apologized. I don't know if they have taken steps because an apology without change is just manipulation again. Right, so uh, that's how empaths get themselves in trouble because we forgive and we allow people back in, and we because in the and the reason it happened in the first place is because we believed the best in them, right? So it's hard for for us once um, it's been proven to us so severely that this person has lied and manipulated, and and uh, you gave them the benefit of the doubt, believing who they were, believing in the goodness that you saw in them. Um, and now they come again, and it's kind of like that song, um, um, I'm a bad liar, right? I'm a bad liar. 
I lied and I lied and I lied. Basically, I lied through this entire relationship, this whole thing. I've lied the entire time. But now I'm coming to you and I'm telling you, believe me this one last time. I mean, I mean now you know and you're free to walk away, but I, I'm a bad liar. Um, so now you know. Here's the truth, right? And, um, and that's when I think it's wise to kind of take a step back, even though you are emotionally attached, no doubt, and just give it a little space until you can... Let your some, your emotions settle and see the truth of the situation, and and yet, um, it's hard for me to be angry, to stay angry. And spirit always is. It's always about love. What would love say, and what would love do? Right? We need to protect ourselves. We're not going to deal with a narcissistic person and allow that to continue um, once it's been shown to us that that's the case. But um, I did a spread this morning. And I shared it and uh, I'm looking at it here and it's so clear to me what I'm looking at and I want to show it to you guys I asked you guys what you what you, what you saw so what I see here are these this top line it came out this first this this so at first this one was in the light right and then something came along and what came along a brother Right? Could be a sister, but a brother. And I'm going in this direction because this is family loyalty. And yet I'm looking back at this one. This is the light. And then it came to here. And there this one is. Very snuggling with their cat. Being grateful for everything in front. And then there's sharing. Right? Sharing information. Sharing your gifts. One step at a time. Right? You got to move. keep moving forward is what I got. To me, this was us. This was him, this was us. I mean, me and the one on the outside. And then this is what I had to do, right? When this one went off this way, even though they were looking back at the light. This is about taking care of yourself, being grateful for what's in front of you. This one's holding her little cat, right? And has the horse there. And the energy is always next to her, never left her side. Sharing information, as far as I was concerned, in our dreams, information was never broken, it was always there. But I keep moving forward one step at a time. But the rainbow is a promise of good things after a storm. And then I went, so I go like this, I went like this, and then I went like this. And then there's a change, a blessed change. As this horse is moving forward, you're going through the gates. The changes that you're going through are, are positive changes. It feels difficult at the time, but there's growth that's happening. And then they show that white horse again. Forgiveness, right? And then right here, relax, everything's okay. Don't worry, it's going to work out fine. So, in the song right now, I'm wide awake. Katy Perry's I'm wide awake. Um, and it could represent many things for all of us, so we're going to be sharing this as well. It doesn't have to be a love relationship like mine was. It can be anything. I'm wide awake. Because as we awaken, we see things differently, right? I'm wide awake. I was in the dark. I was falling hard with an open heart, right? My heart was open. I, I was <laughs> falling hard. How did I read the stars so wrong? I'm wide awake, and now it's clear to me that everything you see ain't always what it seems. I'm wide awake. I was dreaming for so long. I wish I knew then what I know now. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't dive in. I wouldn't dive down. I wouldn't bow down. Gravity hurts. You made it so sweet till I woke up on the concrete, right? I dove in head first, not having a clue until I smashed my face on the concrete. Somebody that was pulled in by, by something that wasn't what it seemed, a facade, right? Falling from cloud nine, crashing from on high. I'm letting go tonight. I'm falling from cloud nine. I'm wide awake. I'm not losing any sleep. I picked up every piece and landed on my feet. Nothing needing needing nothing to complete myself and that's where we were in the middle of for me when the when it's time to move forward right it's time to go it's time to forget the past forget what happened forgive the past because forgiveness makes way for healing and you move forward there's nothing to worry about relax it's going to be okay right but what i saw and i shared was this child this breaks my heart i'm a mom right so here is this little girl sitting on that little stool, thinking, right? What's going on, that little girl? I always, I always see myself, I, I be first, right? 
Nine times out of ten, the story behind the misbehavior won't make you angry. It will break your heart. So everything isn't what you think it is, right? It isn't what you believe to be true. Sometimes you're given, you're fed a story, right? Feed her a story. Give her this. Keep her busy. Keep your keep her occupied occupied with that. And 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 you're and 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 what happens when you don't have all the information? You you play private detective because you're trying to piece things together. It's not your fault. You don't have all the information in front of you, but. As the information comes, and it comes in so many different sources, it gets you to the point where you know you 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 start mistrusting your own higher self, your own intuition. Can you know how, how can that be? This isn't. It doesn't make sense to me. These, but but this is so consistent, and yet spirit says you know. So it's like back and forth, and and even if you do have the information in front of you, if you don't have all the information, you paint a completely different story. So what I said was, I feel this to be very true. At first, I'm feeling very angry. And then the story spills out of trembling lips and flushed cheeks. And now my chest begins to constrict and my eyes begin to prick and burn and the tears flow hot and heavy. So much childhood pain we all carry. Understanding and forgiveness are such healing actions. So yes, all that happened and this is what you went through and that's what it made me feel and, and you, you have made a choice and that's what you chose to do. And yet why did that happen? What, what, was the reason that you chose to not follow the light. You chose to go back. What happened that I wasn't a part of, that I wasn't aware of? What triggers were, were hit, right? Were pricked. Song right now, you never let me go, I never let you down. No, I never let you go, you never let me down. Um, and this is what I saw in my, in my dreams, in my real dreams, and in my heart. This is the, what I believed. Um, Let me love you. I need to turn the radio off or we're gonna be doing this again and again. Um, I never let you go, you never let me down. Let me love you. DJ Snake, DJ, wow, I just got a huge hit. I used to believe we were burning on the edge of something beautiful, something beautiful, selling a dream, smoke and mirrors keeps us waiting on a miracle. So go through the darkest of days, heaven's a heartbreak away, never let you go, never let me down. It's been a hell of a ride, driving the edge of a knife, never let you go, never let me down. Don't you give up on me, I won't give up. Let me love you. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. We've got a million miles ahead of us. All that we need is a rude awakening to know we're good enough. Wow. It's a dream that I watched. It's a dream that I watched and it's actually somebody's life. Somebody driving fell asleep at the wheel and they crashed their tree and they died. They lost somebody very important to them. blew their world apart. Um, so when I was going through all of this and thinking about all of this, I had a deck that came to mind that I wanted to do a reading with today. And I'm going to try not to go too deep into the cards because I just want to see what pops up. And these other two decks came forward too. The Saints and Angels and magical messages of the fairies. And the fact that I put them up, I'm gonna just tell you what's on the bottom of each. There's a healing taking place, or there's a need of a healing to take place. Ask for what it is that you want. Let the universe and other people know what you need. We can't help you if we don't know what you need, right? Says spirit and your friends and family. On the bottom of the fairy tale oracle is the Snow Queen speaking about loyalty. So the speak the loyalty, the Snow Queen, it reminds me of, um, um, I think it is too. Oh, wow. See, I, I'm going to do it by looking at this because, and it opened right up to it. <laughs> I found the book. Uh, but I think this is the, the, the Disney movie, um, the two, the two girls, the sisters, Frozen, right? And, and one, 
can't remember the, 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 the movie, but in this particular movie, it talks, I mean movie, and life is like a movie, and that's what it looks like for me. So it, it talks about um, basically a friendship, an innocent friendship between people where, and an enduring friendship, a friendship that, that is loyal, a loyal friend, right? And it literally talks about when the presence of one in their life can bring another one back from, the, from an unresponsive place. And remember the story, the dream that I had about the one who, there was someone that I loved, this wooden bo this, and then this boy turned to wood, and there was no response, and the family gave up on this person, and they walked away, and I kept saying, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, right? This, they're gonna come back, no, they're not. And the brother kept coming back to check on this one to see, and I would say, look, look, and, and one eye would open and there would be color, but when he got there, it, they were, there was no color. Again, he turned back to wood, kept going back and forth, and I, wouldn't, I refused to give up on this one. So this is literally, and I didn't realize that this was the story. I had that dream five years ago, and I don't... I don't know when this deck came out. I'm curious to see, but I definitely haven't had it for five years. I might have had, I don't even think I've had it a year. So I didn't know this, this, this one was in here. But it's basically confirmation of my dreams. So this is, this is how spirit works, right? It talks about, um, also, it makes me think of my son. Um, in my dreams, my son, it confused me who I was seeing as my son because the one who told my the person in my life to stay away they called by my daughter's my daughter's name and my son has been in my dreams as well and at one point my daughter looked to her brother and said please don't ever forget me and the mother wasn't speaking to the son she was she loved him very much she looked at him and she said there's my beautiful boy but she wasn't speaking to him and he wasn't speaking to her he was very angry at her and also at, at the sister or younger brother, whoever it was. Um, and so I'm sister, I think. And in my dreams, I was trying to understand what this is, but my son suffers from something called SAD. He, it's seasonal depression. And if he doesn't get enough vitamin D from the sun, he gets very depressed and he needs, he needs warmth. And I mean, we all need warmth, but that, you think about that in symbolic terms, right? This is someone who, who didn't have enough warmth. Um, given to them, but this is literally seasonal affective disorder and my son would get little bumps on his skin He used to so now he, he has to come to California. He lives in Canada in British Columbia and it's a beautiful place But they go months and months with rain right and gray and Being on the island there in Victoria and Vancouver Island beautiful beautiful place But for someone with a with a seasonal affective disorder, it doesn't work out well So he and his wife travel down to California for a couple of months every when it gets really heavy so that he can he can get this rebalancing done for himself so the message to this card is about placing your this is loyalty this is about placing your loyalty in a friendship that that you know matters this is a long-term friendship and it's the message is that this this friendship will come back to you even if someone has grown distant and cold because your loyalty and your love and sending your love your energetic feeling like I was sending love into this boy that I loved, this wooden boy, it brought him back eventually in my dreams. I saw all of a sudden he suddenly burst back to life. And that if, if we're patient and we send love and, and we trust in spirit and we trust that everything is a cycle, right? Everything has a cycle. They're saying that this friendship will be returned to you and the love that you had once before you will feel again. So that's on the bottom of this deck. I'm glad to look at this message, but... Um, Often, you know, I, did, I, I didn't know and I wasn't able to confirm with the persons that I was dreaming with whether this was myself and what I felt with the person in my life or whether this was me in his body with his friend, right? A friend in his life that, that had grown cold and distant and, and, and could be in, in, the, in the grips of, of an addiction, right? And didn't, because and, I kept getting that song, I would have stayed up all night if I could have saved a friend. So, somebody that mattered. No, this friend doesn't have to be a brother or a guy friend or a girlfriend. It could have been a mother or a father, right? And you could be very much in love with somebody, but if there's somebody in your family that is in deep 
deep, deep suffering and you're, you stay loyal to them, I keep thinking of the Canadian goose, right? Never leave a wounded bird behind. I'm a Canadian goose and I'm extremely loyal too. So I needed to have clarity for the messages that I was getting. And uh, I wanted to use this, this deck because I felt that the answers were in here. So for you guys, um, I'll give you items to choose from. And uh, one item are these sunglasses. These sunglasses were left at my house five and a half years ago. So see through your dark glasses. Um, why, why are you wearing dark glasses? I'm hiding who I am. I'm hiding the truth of how I feel. You can't see how tired I am. You can't see me crying. You can't see, you can't read me if I have these glasses on, right? So it's a protection. It's, it's a protection for my own eyes. I've got very fair eyes. It's a protection for me, but it also makes me feel safe, right? And it could be, like I said, it's, it could be not what, what you imagine. Um, I had an uncle that was six foot four. My uncle wasn't as tall as my cousin, but he was big, like a bear. My family and men are like bears, big man, big black beard. And he terrified me my whole life. I was scared to death of him. He was a hunter. And of course, I've always been an animal empath and, and I couldn't handle that. And one time, I mean, my cousin and my brothers were always, my brother and my cousins were always trying to torture me. I grew up with boys and they knew how sensitive I was about animals. And I don't know who draw, told me to come over to the burning barrel, but we have a burning barrel. Grandma used to, you know, trim the trees and stuff and all the garden stuff would be put in the burning bar barrel. And they said, Cherry, come here, come here. They always used to do horrible things to me. And I went over to the burning barrel and, and uh, my cousin had gerbils. And that gerbil had had babies. And they said, look what Uncle Len did. And I looked in the uh, burning barrel and there were these babies burning. And I lost my mind. I hated him. I hated him with everything in me. How could you do that? I knew he was an evil, evil man. I knew he was evil. And I mean... He already would have those beautiful deer lying in the back of the truck, those Bambi, you know, they would say, Sherry, come here, look. And they'd rip the tarp back and there in the bed of the truck are lying seven of the most beautiful deer, dead, their eyes open, long eyes. And I, I'm just traumatized by this man. Then he raised rabbits and he, he murdered them, you know, snapped their necks. And I was just like, this man is pure evil. So as I grew up as an adult and, and I never saw him, you could never read his face, right? Never straight face. And uh, he terrified me. And so as an adult, I was always in, uncomfortable around him. And my brother was his favorite uncle. He loved him, right? Favorite, lo loved him. And I thought, I don't get you, get it. I understand because you're just as twisted as he is. And uh, <laughs> I went to his house one day and they, he, he wanted to show me the rabbits. And I said, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. And I said, I, I don't know how, and now I'm an adult. I said, I don't know how you could do that. And he said, he took me, he said, what are you talking about? And and then I told him what I saw, you know, and things that I felt. And, and he said, why would they say that to you? Why would they take you over there and show you that? He goes, it's just boys. And I said, why would they, why would you do that? And he said, Sherry, the mother had killed the babies. Because if you touch the babies when they're, when they're young, she'll, she'll kill them. And sometimes they just kill them anyway. And she had killed the babies. And so he says, I was just disposing of the bodies. I wouldn't have burned them alive. And I said, what about torturing the rabbits and snapping their necks? And he said, I have pet rabbits and we have rabbits that we raise to eat. I never bond with them. These are my pets. This is, this is meat. I, I, I use every part. I, I'm very respectful of them. I, I, it's quick. I don't have them suffer. And I said, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. But as an adult, I looked at this man and now here he is talking to me and he's wearing, you know, wearing glasses, but he's not got dark sunglasses on. I'm in his house and I see these big, Creases, laugh lines, laugh lines, smiling, and he had crinkly blue eyes and very, very handsome man. Blue eyes and black hair, and my cousin, blue eyes and black hair, and I don't know. I grew up and I had the completely wrong impression of this man. Now, clearly, I don't want to be around a hunter. I have a hard time with that, right? I'm a vegetarian, and it's very upsetting to me. But the man wasn't who I thought he was, and I had a misconception of that, and it tortured me my whole life. <laughs> so, you know. He was very stern faced. You couldn't read his face, but now that he was older, you could see the laugh lines and that he had a, he had a very dry sense of humor, which my brother has a hysterical sense of humor. And that's no doubt why he was his favorite uncle. 
So that comes up for a reason, no doubt somebody needed to hear that, but behind these glasses, why, why do you wear sunglasses? So here's a pair of glasses. The other item is going to be this rock that I found in Sedona with an initial, special initial. That blew my mind because it was like this in the dirt when I was walking along and I saw that green, that spot. And it looked like an eye to me. See it? And I thought, wow, that's so freaking cool. And I pick it up and there's another spot. And I thought, neat, the green, right? And then I saw the J and I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So this is, uh, this is how spirit speaks to me, right? The green is love and healing growth, right? So there's that. And the next item will be feeling really emotional right now all of a sudden like extremely emotional I need to so the next item will be this selenite tower because I need to clear <laughs> my energy I'm feeling somebody's emotions very very strong right now um selenite tower selenite is self-charging self-cleansing and it will charge and cleanse every other crystal it does not absorb anything right it's it's completely neutral this is how we should be in our, when we're standing in our highest power, completely neutral, not sending out energy, you know, putting our energy onto others and not absorbing anyone else's. We remain neutral. So this selenite tower. And this bracelet. I love this bracelet. It's an antique bracelet and I lost all of my special things that were in that storage unit um, I was, I've always been cat woman or like the cat for Halloween and I've always dressed as the cat and this was part of the costume that I would wear. Um, this is the only piece I have left and I found it and I was so excited because everything else was in the storage unit that was stolen and it's flowers. They look like daisies, don't they? Which is the April flower. Daisies are so happy and, and they're the hippie flower, right? They're full of promise. I love this. I love vintage. I love different. I love pretty and I love sparkly, right? So there's that. I'm going to definitely choose this as one of my items. And I'll choose the J Rock because I always have. All right. So we're going to start. But first, what I want to do, considering I have felt that energy, is I want to start with a singing bowl. And my cats are all sleeping right now. So this is going to disturb them. The Liger's not asleep, but. You guys know what it means, right? We're gonna take all the negative energy and have it pulled through to the center. We're asking our Father to fill this with unconditional healing, unconditional love. Okay, so it's 24 karat gold infused. For anyone who's new and, and doesn't know this when I've spoken about the singing bowl before, I am the happy Buddha, the laughing Buddha actually, and my twin is the happy Buddha. And when I was given this, uh, actually I, I traded, traded for this, I did readings for this. It's literally called the laughing Buddha. It's pretty cool. And 24 karat gold is about knowing your self worth. And uh, so when we ask that anything that's negative be pulled down and fill it, go inside of it. We've all already asked for unconditional love to be filling it. And so when everything gets vibrated into it, it's spun around and as it gets pushed out the walls of it, it's purified, turned back into pure white light. And of course, unconditional love is vibrated out. So that comes, that goes out, that clears our energy, that cleared all of my cards, 
cleared what I, whatever my thoughts um, in a negative way, I'm still left feeling this sadness. I've got this sadness. So um, I, I, I don't want to turn the, the radio on yet because I, I get distracted and we'll go into too many different songs. I will turn it on in a minute. It's a very heavy day today. It's actually really beautiful right now. If you look up there, it's beautiful. I see a face in that cloud. You guys see it? Oh my gosh! It looks like the um, the never-ending story. I see the front. I can see soft, sad eyes, and oh, I see sadness. It's looking at that little. Looks like a little duck. Do you see the little duck in front of it? Gosh, I wish I could take it. I'm gonna turn this around. Oh my gosh! I see something better. At the top of that, there's a bear looking at the little duck, but the duck is now disappearing. But I see a bear, his nose, his eyes. He's running. He's running towards that little duck that's disappearing. So the duck, the duckling. So duck is comfort, duck is community. But that's a baby, and it's disappearing, and the bear's running fast. And now I see a panther. Oh, my God, I see, actually, I see a tiger. Can you see the tiger? This is in my way see the tiger its tail running out the back and its body and its legs the reason I think I saw a tiger was because I saw stripes in it so now the tiger is running so the bear turns into a tiger it was in a hurry too bear mother bear protection okay makes sense turns into a tiger <sighs> um, for those who chose What do we start with? We have the selenite tower, we have the sunglasses, we have the rock, we have the bracelet. For those who chose the sunglasses, I, I don't want to do this deck. Um, those who chose the sunglasses. I think I'll just... The princess and the pea, sensitivity. This is somebody that other people think is too sensitive. This is you and me, empaths. Um, I'm a super sensitive, and this is absolutely me. I can feel if there is a granule of sand in my bed and I can't sleep, it'll drive me crazy. I sleep with earplugs, I sleep with a mask, I sleep with a fan going. I can smell if there is something that's off, I'll smell it and, and, it, and it'll drive me crazy until I take care of it. Um, and so this is talking about somebody with super sensitivity. And look at this super sensitive one holding on to their bear, that bear that was running towards that it's running towards that baby duckling. I say that that bear sees that one as the baby duckling. And that one is in need of comfort. That one's a royal one. Look at, it's a prince or princess, right? It's the princess and the pea, or it could be a prince and a pea. And this one is, maybe has been shamed because they were so sensitive, because, and maybe people didn't understand that they had gifts and made fun of them, didn't take them seriously or felt that they were a bother. This is somebody who feels their way through life. They don't, it's not logic to them, it's feelings, how it feels to me. This person needs to have a comfortable place. Perhaps this person didn't have a comfortable place, or perhaps, this person has been kept in a place of safety because they're such a super sensitive one. It's also telling you that you have empathic qualities, gifts and talents, and you can feel your way through everything. What decisions that you have to make are decisions that you should make from what you feel. How does it make you feel? It tells you also that you need to have a place where you feel safe and comfortable. Trust what you're getting in your gut. This is also telling you that you shouldn't be ashamed of what you, ha what you are, who you are, how you behave, how you see the world, how you feel the world. Maybe you've had to hide that from other people and it's been difficult for you because you may have been raised with others that didn't have an understanding of this and you were told, life's tough, better wear a helmet. When in all reality, you should have been your, your gifts should have been cultivated and, res and respected. Life hasn't been easy for you. It's actually been quite difficult. But you can use the gifts that you have. These, what you may have thought are curses, are actually strengths for you. 
you can come out into the open about who you truthfully are and not worry about any more what anyone may think of you. Like maybe you, you have growing up. Maybe there was a need for somebody to act like a mother bear or a tigress because this one was so sensitive, right? People might have considered you fussy or difficult. What the hell's wrong with you? You're weird. Super sensitive. Jeez. Get it together. But there's something very rare about you. You're very precious. You're very unique, very special. And you need to be told that. that. And you need to understand that. You need to believe that. I'm going to ask for one more card in this deck. Okay. Two cards flipped out. Your wish is granted. What you've asked for is coming true and your desire is within reach. So have faith as everything is working in your favor. How does that make you feel? Get excited and hold that feeling. Use those gifts that you have. Hold on to them and recognize whatever this is. And I'm not going to go into depth over it because you already know what you've been wishing for. What has been your wish? Who has been your wish? Your wish is granted. It's coming. And it's that close. It's that close. So have faith that everything is working in your favor. Keep yourself in that energy high. So you're going to go from feeling worried, right? This is telling you you can trust what you've been picking up. You can trust your, your feelings in this, in this area because this is coming to you. Beautiful. I'm going to leave it that, that. I'm leaving it that way. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the Selenite Tower... Correct for neutrality on all levels for those who chose the Selenite Tower. So at first I saw a dragon, right? Never ending story. Think about that. This has been a never ending story. It's just going on and on and on and on. And then I saw the duckling, right? Think about the duckling, the ugly duckling that grew up into be a beautiful swan. Didn't see how beautiful they were, right? Their sensitivity, their gifts, didn't see that, didn't recognize their worth. And what was charging at that, um, it was charging at that little duckling. At first was the dragon. Look, look, no, at first the, the dragon of the never ending story looked very, very sympathetic, was loving, nurturing. But then there was a bear that was coming down. And then there was a tiger charging. So, could have been the emotions and what you were feeling right and how things changed how at first it seemed like this and it seemed like that and then it became this correct for neutrality on all levels and then it might have been you yourself and you looking at yourself the whole way through it right and then that little duckling disappeared in front of you and what was left at the end what was left at the end was a tiger I got the eye of the tiger I'm dancing through the fire because I'm a champion and you're going to hear me roar louder than a lion. You might have started out as an ugly duckling in your own mind, right? Then you had your teddy bear. Oh, go get your teddy bear. And then, but there was always that one, that gentle giant, that, that dragon, that dragon that was sympathetic to you, that was overlooking and taking care of you and ready to carry you away, right? I love that. Oh God, I got chills all over the place. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the Selenite Tower... The Rose Elf, Revelations. Okay, so this is truths being told. This is why I wanted to use this deck. Because there's been so many different versions of reality, right? Look I mean, what you watched in the sky. What All those things happened. First you see this, then you see that, then you see the other. And you may not have seen that. You may have looked at that and saw something else. I'm curious to see what you guys saw. If you were able to see something in that cloud. I still see the bear. I see the bear. But look what has happened. I wonder if you can see it now. Maybe you can't. At the very, see the bottom part turns into a V, but the top part, now the bear is facing down, but it looks like a teddy bear. It's got a round ear at the top, the snub nose. At first it looked like a, a, a big bear that was like charging, and now it's a teddy bear. And it looks like it's fallen on its face. Ooh, it's fallen on your face. Huh. So, revelations. Every time I do that, every time I look out there, my eyes are blind and I can't see. Oh, my goodness. 
So the rose elf, check out this the skull. This one is sit, uh, sitting above. This is this is the story that I spoke about when I, I did the spread yesterday and what I watched with the dark prince going after and attacking the one, going in the one tunnel and then coming out the other end and, and realizing that the one that they were chasing was not the one that they started out chasing. They ended up chasing somebody else because that person ripped off their mask and showed who they truthfully were and they were they took that other one down and I said it was karmic justice that took place and that yet I struggle, right? But here is the message. This one here, this young one has a possessive and jealous brother who forbids this one from seeing the one that they have fallen deeply in love with. And they refuse to obey the brother. This one could be a male or a female. And so the brother murders this one's lover and buries this one in the woods. But this story talks about how the true fate and the, of, of, this, of this lover and of this, of this brother. And when this one was buried, this is the head of the one that was buried in the, in the soil, in the forest. She goes into this forest and she finds his head and she brings it home and puts it in a pot. She covers it with earth and plants start growing and she starts watering it, but she doesn't water it with water, she waters it with her tears. She cries and cries and cries over her dead lover. And then seedlings start to, to grow from this. And this little plant that starts to grow is filled with all of the love that she has for her lover that had been, has been taken from her, from the tears that have come from her broken heart. And so she does this all the time and her brother thinks he's, that she's lost her mind, right? Gone crazy. She does this all the time and her brother thinks she's lost her mind. Every time I rhyme, you guys. So what happens is she's so filled with grief that she passes away. She dies. But this jasmine grows and there's so many beautiful little flowers and her brother goes to move that pot and when he does, all these fairies fly out of the pot and they kill him. They take his life. And when his body is found, they don't just discover that one body, they also discover the body of the one he murdered and his deed has been discovered now. So this talks about justice. And I said, it wasn't fun to watch, right? I love Prince. He did something really bad. And he went after and hurt two people, not just one, two. He hurt Bella and Daisy, and which would be the lover and the sister or the brother, right? And in the end, the one turned on the other and hurt him, put him in his place. And I said, it wasn't fun to watch because he was hurting too, but it was karmic justice, right? So this story is confirmation for me. I'm not going to be getting any more confirmations than the fact that I, this story keeps repeating, right? So this is telling you that justice comes about where there is love that is that strong and grief is so strong that you don't give up. You don't give up. The love is not gone. And there's such intense emotion that makes it impossible for this not to come to light. This is where the truth be told. And you will be able to be free of the burden that you've carried. And any bullying, because remember I said that one was a bully. Any bullying or unkindness is going to end. All the truths eventually come on earth, as it is the message in this story. So the simple message here is it's best to tell the truth. Because whatever lies you've told are going to be exposed. It will come to the surface. So trust what you get with your instincts. Remember, we started with super sensitive gifts. Trust what you're getting. You're right in what you're getting. It also speaks about the flowers and the bees coming to the aid of, of even though the one wasn't there to, to, to tell the story themselves, it wasn't going to be left undone. It wasn't going to be left. So tell the truth. This is telling the truth about a murder. This is telling the truth about an injustice about family abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, a misuse of power, control, manipulation, and it talks about bringing hope back to the ones who have lost it. So the truth is gonna be revealed, even if it's been a very, very long time, and there's going to be justice that comes, even if it comes years later. What is right is gonna to rise to the surface. An evil in the past comes to light, so it could be about family secrets, right? And it talks about a, an abusive person being found out. 
Now, that's, that can talk about so many different scenarios in your own life. I will tell you, and I need to ask for my own self, uh, because of the way my dreams work, I've found that I've been dreaming, and have I been dreaming about this life, about the person in my life, or have I been dreaming about the generation past, the family's, the, the parents' life? That's how deep this goes, because it's family secrets, right, that come to light. So what have I, what have I connected to? What have I uncovered? Have I uncovered what happened and the reason why this happened in my life? Or is it showing a family cycle because of secrets? You know, this one sees too much. This one knows too much. Get rid of them because there's secrets that are going to be unearthed. Oh my God, that one's tapping in on something. It's not, they're not tapping in on what they think they're tapping in on. They're tapping in on something else. And it's pretty bad because I have seen that. I've seen a murder take place. I've seen a man burned alive in a house. To, to, I, I've seen all kinds of things happen, <laughs> you know? So let's go to the next deck and we'll ask and we'll see. Hopefully Spirit will show me if this is right now or if it was the past for me. Correct for neutrality on all levels. I don't take hangers on. Oh, I don't take hangers on, but that one dropped. Patience, please. What you're asking about is coming about. What you're asking for is coming about. The truth, a situation to be revealed, a job, someone coming forward. There are unseen factors that need to occur first. This may also talk about, now you see this one out in the forest, right? Like we just spoke about. And while they're out in the forest, look at the look on this one's face. To me, it looks like shock. Something that was uncovered. And look who uncovered it. The butterfly that came to rest on this one's finger. Now how, how did it, how was it revealed? Was it revealed while this one was sleeping in a dream? While they were out in nature? Because when we get out in nature, we clear our minds. This one's been there a long time. They're covered in vines. I just rhymed again. So this may tell you that what you're thinking about or waiting for um, is about to come out, right? Because this, this one has been here for quite some time. The vines are already there. So I wouldn't say that this, the way I read this is that the time of patience is coming to an end. You have been patient. You have patiently waited for something to come out. It also tells you several other things. Whatever else is going on in your life, your relationship with a loved one may happen soon. You have to wait before, I, I've got a move that I'm, I'm, I'm considering, right? This is also patience, please. There's unseen factors right now. So wait a little bit before you make a move on the topic that you're asking about. We have to pay attention to how we feel. Um, pay attention to all the ins and outs. Ask yourself what works best in, for me, right? If you've been asking for money, if you've been asking for a loan, for assistance, if you've been asking for anything, it's have patience. It's, it's in the works right now. It is nearly at hand, okay? So then for those who chose the J-Rock, the J-Rock. Correct for neutrality. I think, I think of the rock, right? J-Rock. J-Rock. For those who chose the J-Rock, correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the J-Rock. I love looking at that one particular cloud. It keeps turning into different things. And um, right now, it's extremely compact again because the wind has been blowing against it. And right now, I'm looking at a baby bear sitting up. And it's actually morphing into what looks like Snoopy. And I see a frog on the outside. Oh, the frog is really crystal clear. So there's a dog, Snoopy, which represents best friend, loyalty, friendship, protection, devotion. And the frog, which is completely morphing now quickly. The frog talks about transformation, which is quickly happening. And about dropping your emotional baggage and about cleaning house, right? This is cleaning house of secrets, family secrets. This is about telling the truth about something that you know, right? Sometimes people are afraid to come forward and speak about what's happening to them, but this is an encouragement that you need to do that and that justice will be served. Hold on, I'm trying to wake my computer up. Yes, I am trying to wake my computer up. In my dreams, I was told, they called the computer and the computer goes and works for them. So now a computer is somebody who others would see as someone who doesn't show much emotion, right? And yet, 
Maybe this one has learned to not show much emotion, but deep inside they're super sensitive. But it hasn't been for, safe for them to show their emotion because of how they've been treated, how they've experienced the world, right? So it's about dropping that baggage, releasing things from the past that no longer are beneficial, no longer serve you. Stop carrying ancient history with you. Maybe that too, right? Stop carrying the past. It's not yours to carry. Maybe that's it too. Maybe what's been happening is you've been, someone has kept you cloistered and protected because of something that happened to them when they were younger. They don't want that to happen to you. And so you've been holed up. But it's like, that's not even my story. That's your story. So stop carrying the story of other people. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the J Rock, the Sea Maiden promises. So this is interesting, this one. This little sea maiden, look at the color, that's my favorite. I love that color, aqua blue, turquoise blue. I'm looking at, there's a, 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 a um, I told you the crow family is building a nest right across from me in the palm tree, in the prickly palm. Um, they keep coming up to the top of my roof, like right outside of my desk. Curious about what they're getting up there. They, that's where they come from. They go up there, they come back down, they go back up there, it's really interesting. So I'm looking at the eggs that this one, is perhaps um, hiding, protecting. I see those as something coming to life, something like their nest egg, right? I feel that. So there's a story, and these stories are so are so odd because they only tell part of the story, which is kind of like what I, what I began with, right? There's only part of the story you're going to get, so it's a little bit confusing. So this one begins with somebody wishing for more than they have right? I, I thought about this yesterday. Um, I was driving out of Canyon Lake where I live and I was driving along the causeway and there's water on both sides and the palm trees are so beautiful and there was the black and gray clouds in the sky with bright, bright blue and the water was rippled on both sides with the wind and I said, God, it's beautiful here. I remember when I first got my first suite. This isn't the first place I got here in Canyon Lake, but I was so excited to be living in here. I thought it was such a beautiful place to be. And then I thought, when did it get to the place where I was so anxious to leave it, right? It was so beautiful. It is so beautiful. Why are you in such a hurry to get to Sedona? Why are you in such a hurry? What are you running from? What, what is it that you, that you need to escape here, right? I don't like the heat. And, and, but, but in all reality, you were so excited to be here. Well, at first it was because my landlord was going to sell the house, right? But he's fixing it up, fixing it up, and he's taking forever. And he's probably going to have it still here in September, it's fixing it up, fixing it up, taking forever. It's probably going to still have it here in September. Okay, message. So this, so I thought about this for myself, about being grateful. I mean, clearly I am. I love my window, right? So why not be satisfied with going to Sedona on, on trips right now until something else? I, I don't know. We'll see what it is. But I'm looking at this, the nest egg behind there. So there's one that was wishing for, for more than what they had. And so what, did, what does he have to do in order to get what he wants? So he trades something away or promises something in order to get whatever it is. So when the time comes to make the payments on it, how am I going to deal with those feelings? That's not as fun, right? Well, I wanted this. I really, really did. You know, I went to the store. Have you ever had buyer? It's basically buyer's remorse, <laughs> right? So this is talking about also when times are tough, we make promises. Okay, well, if you help me with this, I'll do that for you, right? Because you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So... If things get better, we work, we, we work harder, we get the money, right? And we're careful. Or are we? Or do we get ourselves in that bind again and again? My brother was notorious for this, right? Wanted, 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 got it, dug himself into a hole. And then how do you handle that? Now you got big bills coming in, you don't have the money for it. So we refinance the house over and over and over again until you're completely upside down. You've got nothing left in your house. So this is about being careful, being respectful, right? This is about recognizing that, you know, when things were crappy and things were tough and you got to a place and you finally, things start getting better, it's about being grateful and remembering where you were before you got to that. Remember where you were, Sherry, before you got here. Look where you are, right? So you'll take better care. If you have had a difficulty between someone that you love you, you've, and you're on the verge of losing that one and then you fix things, you, you get things, you get back together, do you forget? how totally ripped apart and how sad you were that they were gone from your life or that they were not speaking or that there was a problem or do you allow yourself to go slack again and, and, and not learn your lesson? 
Have you learned to love better? Have you learned to be more respectful? Have you learned to connect better, right? These are all these stories, messages that come together. So this fisherman, he needs his catch. Things aren't going well for him. He needs his catch. So he makes a deal, right? And the sea maiden comes forward and she says that she'll give him these magical grains. That's what you see here. Magical grains. To me, they look like um, fish eggs, right? So I guess that's what they were in the sea. But then they turn to magical grains for him, which is going to give him an enchanted life. He's going he's to have everything that he needs. All the, the trees will become enchanted. Um, the fish will become enchanted. Everything. And she wants a son, this one. She wants some, something from him. So they strike a deal. And the deal is when your son comes of age, you have to give your son to me. So it talks about the promises and debt, promises made by, by a parent that a child has to live up, live up to. It could be that at this time, that deal was made. Now the son has to go, but the brothers don't want that to happen. They're going to stop it from happening. So they go to save their brother. But she, she wants what she, she made a deal on. She's lonely. She wants this, this mate. She waits a long, long time. She keeps up her end of the bargain. She gives the fisherman what he asked for and what she had promised, right? So something is supposed to be expected in return. So why, why is it unfair for her to get what she's asked for? But what might she do? Well, if she takes a fit, one from the land to the sea with her, she's going to drown him. He's not going to be able to live. So it's basically the father has offered their child as a sacrifice. And remember, I got in my dreams a while back, your sacrifice is over. This one had been sacrificed for a member of their family. And the story is, in this story, that the son is ultimately spared. He doesn't die. His, he was able to go back. But... It rep represents that there is a debt that needs to be paid, right? So it talks also about change, transforming from one state of being to another. Um, if you are someone that lived near the sea, it's about moving into the land. Well, look at me. I live around a lake. So that talks about me moving towards a different type of area, right? It could be someone that used to be a hunter, now becomes a farmer, right? Now that could be metaphorical or literal. It talks about being restless to find a home. And yet, there's still debt that you have you have to pay off, so you can't get that home that you want. It talks about inheriting debt from a family that's not really even yours. It talks about pattern that patterns that need to be changed for good, because that's not okay. Don't 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 make a deal with somebody else and and have me be the sacrifice, right? It talks about keeping your word. Don't make a promise you can't deliver on yourself, not someone else. It talks about being prepared to make a sacrifice. If you want this, you have to, you, you know, you have to give up this to get that. So what is it? It talks about honoring a deal. Fair. What's fair for you? What's fair for us? Strike a deal in a fair, a fair manner. It talks about you changing your own fate or fate being changed on the behalf of you. It talks about you having to have gone through something like this and you've survived it. There's a lot of messages I'm hearing in my own head because I know that my old landlord wants to strike a deal with me about this property that I'm going to go look at. And I'm, I'm hearing a lot of messages. So I'm going to go to the Saints and Angels deck for the next card. Ooh, butting of heads. It's getting dark outside too. Clouds are accumulating. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality on all levels. I just heard the word change change healthful lifestyle you're going to change to a healthful lifestyle actually interesting it says healthful eating but i heard lifestyle so you're going to change your lifestyle to something more healthy something away from the city to be more in nature i don't like all the cement that's one of the reasons i didn't like i can't ride my bike much around here I've, i have to ride around all the streets and all the cars right um, I'm in a beautiful little oasis, but right outside of where I live, it's all new. Yeah. So maybe that's a message that I'm getting too, because this is a change and it's going to be a healthy lifestyle, um, a more natural lifestyle, a simplistic lifestyle, a more spiritual lifestyle, because the color purple is spirituality. 
a place, and it's going to be a healing lifestyle because the color green is, is healing. It's a new beginning also. And it's all blue skies ahead. There could be, a, there's a little bit of cumulus clouds, but, but it's mostly blue sky. And you have the assistance of Archangel Raphael. So if there's been an illness, physical illness, or a mental illness, as in, you know, sadness, depression, remember the, the, the um, maybe moving from a colder climate to a warmer climate because you have seasonal affective disorder. Or maybe you, as I said, I heard the story in my dreams how this one would be 98% cured of the things that were going wrong with them once they got away from their triggers because the triggers were what were making them feel the way that they were feeling and how their body was reacting was not because there was something wrong in their body. It was because of the triggers. Instead of treating the symptom, you need to treat the cause, and, and, the, and the, treating the cause was getting away from where they were and going more to a place like this, right? It's also calling on Archangel Raphael to help you. He is the healing angel, healing in family relationships, in health, in love, in everything. Call upon your, your finances, help Archangel Raphael. He's standing there, he's holding a light, right? But he's also holding a bag of gold, So it's also telling you, you need to ingest more healthy substances, right? Stay away from un toxic, unhealthy substances. Eat more organic, fresh. Also, you're going to take that in your body, not only in your stomach and through your mouth, but also through your, through your mind, through your ears, and through your eyes, right? Healing. Healing words. Healing information. Healthy, positive, happy. He's smiling as he reaches up to those branches. Maybe you're going to be growing your own fruit. Wouldn't that be fun to have a tree? You get to pick your own. Ch These are purple, so they're probably plums, but wouldn't it be fun to have a Bing cherry tree? I would love that. I grew up with Bing cherry trees. Okay, so as the card was maybe moving away from the sea, inland, that looks to me where they're going, right? We're somewhere where you're going to be moving to a place where you're going to be growing your own food. Maybe that you're going to be doing that. That's one way to get um, very grounded. All right, so now we're gonna go to the last, which is the daisy bracelet, and that's mine. So there's a message for me. I'm moving away from the ocean, which is where I'm at in California, more towards a meadow area, it looked like, right? Actually, I'm inland. I'm inland right now. I'm on a lake, but I'm inland, and I'm looking at this, and that could represent the sea behind that grass, right? Going out to the ocean. So it could be moving from where you are inland to the coast. I keep thinking of, and when you're looking at the fruit that's growing on the trees, I'm thinking Northern California, where I was headed, actually, Pismo Beach. I always say Pismo. Why do I say Pismo? There must, that means something because I keep saying the word Pismo and so does my landlord. And in my mind, I'm thinking Cambria, but I say Pismo. Hmm. No mistake. No mistake. And I heard Namaste. No mistake. Namaste. No mistake. Namaste. May the divine, the divine in me, within me sees the divine within you. May the peace within me be also with you. Namaste. No mistake. Huh. Correct for neutrality on all levels. I'm looking at a baby lying on a blanket of clouds. <laughs> really. A baby lying on the blanket of clouds. It's really cool because I think I just saw who it is. Well, there's one. And there's another. What? What? Yes? What? Yeah? You want to say hi to everybody? Yeah. I have to, I guess I got up for a second. That's Willow and she has, um, I know, she's got um, thyroid condition. So you think about that. She has to eat a little bit all the time, but very, very healthy food, sorry. And I have, it's hard for me to do this because the, the big boy wants to have it too and I can't give him what she gets. And Siam is the little chubby checker and he wants to have what she wants too. No, you go back to sleep. Now look at him. He is probably 30 pounds now. And it's not healthy for him to be the weight that he is. And so mommy got him cod skin minis. 
the freeze-dried cod skin. It's good for him. It's filled with omega fatty acids, and they're hard crunchies for his teeth, and it's natural with no preservatives. And he's not super excited about it. He would rather have the food that she's having, but when it gets to an animal, like it's like when you're starving, right? And go ahead. He, if he's got nothing else, he'll eat it. So now he's eating it, and I figured that out. If, if it gets to the place where he's going to want something, you know, and I can't give him what she gets, you give him something good for himself. Now think about that. I can't give him what she needs, but there's got to be a healthy alternative. Compromise. All right, for those who chose the flower bracelet, correct for neutrality on all levels. This deck is always very heavy. It's always very heavy. So that's why I wanted to counterbalance it with the other deck. And we're not having any messages from the song, so I'm going to let the radio come on. Just dance. It's going to be okay. Correct for neutrality on all levels. So with the heavy weather like this, there's a lot of deep thinking and upset, and it, it's changeable, but it's, but it's heavy. The mood is heavy. There's a lot of emotion in the air right now. Heavy emotion. I can feel it. My solar plexus is spinning right now. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the daisy bracelet. Fairies. Words. This is the most beautiful coloring. Isn't that gorgeous? Cards are beautiful. But she doesn't look very happy. So words. I said there's heaviness. So um, I'm looking at magic when I look at that. I look at the, the fairy herself looks magical and the colors look magical. But the words, are the words magical? It talks about um, dragonflies. One, there's a dragonfly and a butterfly. I can't make out what this other one is. I think it's a butterfly as well, but it could be, no, it's something different. So, they're magical. They're, they're, they're jewel-encrusted creatures hovering around her. They have gifts for her. The jewels. Somebody right now is saying, somebody help me. The walls are caving in. Sometimes I feel like giving up, but I just can't. It isn't in my blood. Lying on the bathroom floor. I'm over overwhelmed and insecure. Give me something that I can ease my mind. And somebody says, have a drink. You'll feel better. Take her home. You'll feel better. So filling the void. So, so treating the symptom and not the problem, right? It's going to get better, right? It's kind of like, you know what? Yeah, go, go have a drink. Like they don't want to deal with the issue at hand. So they're trying to give, push this off. So this message is talking about this one here who has three sisters one of the three sisters is very sweet and loving and gentle. But the siblings and the stepmother have never, never loved this one. Have never, you can listen to this one in this song. Have never been kind, never spoken a kind word, even though this one is loving and gentle and kind to everyone. This one had, does all the chores. It's kind of like a Cinderella story, right? Does all the chores. And even as she does that, she's very happy. And, and she goes down to the water the water, you think of the water, water is energy, water is love, water is where spirit comes forward. And she meets an ancient old woman who asks her to give her a drink. So she says, of course, because she's a loving, gentle soul. And she dips her ladle in the water and she gives the old woman a drink. And instantly she turns into this beautiful fairy. Beautiful. And she blesses this little girl. And now everything that this little girl says that comes out of her mouth after that comes a jeweled flower. So this is basically showing every time you speak, this is what comes from you, jewels. That's the nature that's within this one. And the fairy woman has been able to see the heart of her and recognize her true value, even though no one has valued this one. Now, of course, the stepmother realizes everything that falls out of this one's mouth is now turning into jewels. So she wants to have, she wants to know, first of all, for the first time, 
why did she have that? But then she thinks to herself, hmm, this is valuable. For the first time, this one has now shown value, right? But still, why were you gifted this way? So then she figures, you know what, if one works, I'll send each of the kids down and they can all get the same blessing. But the fairy isn't stupid. She knows what this wicked stepmother is doing. So when she disguises herself again as this old woman, and the sister is expecting this little old woman, out comes this glorious queen, right? And she asks for the water. And instead of giving this to her, the sister, this one, this beautiful one, rolls her eyes and says, get lost, get out of here. So then when she goes on her way, the sister's thinking, you know, well, that must have been my, my blessing. I mean, she figured she'd have, I, she didn't know what had happened and why the other one had been blessed. But every time she spoke, toads came out of her mouth. So the sister comes home and this is happening and now the stepmother blames the good sister, right? Because of this happening. And then she sends her off into the forest. I, this is a message we got. It's the same story as when King Richard, you know, goes away and... And what was the story that we gave, that we got, um, and, and then the people that were supposed to care for this one mistreated them. And then the story that we got about the one that was banished into the forest by the, it's always this, the, wish, the, stick, the wicked stepmother that banishes the one into the forest. The one goes running off, right? It's always the same story. And there she meets one. It's this one who's out hunting and he's the son of a king. And says, why are you there? Why are you so alone? And so she tells the story, but he doesn't see her value in, in the fact that the jewels come from his mouth. He sees her also, her beauty and her grace and her dignity. So he ends up marrying her. He marries this, this little, this beautiful girl because of her, her kindness and her intelligence. And, and she's diplomatic and she's eloquent and she's everything that, that was not recognized by the family that had her. So it talks about doing the right thing just because it comes naturally just because of the goodness in you, not because you're gonna be rewarded in some way. It just comes naturally to you. It's also talking about the thoughts that, you, that are coming from your mind and, and thinking about the words that you speak, right? It's about not flattering people when, in order to get something. It's like not networking, right? It's not, it's not being a false friend, not, not being kind to someone because they're gonna give you something or get, you're gonna get something from them. And it also talks about if there's any distortion in your mind about something, any jealousy or ugliness towards someone else. It's about transforming those thoughts as well. And maybe there's someone who has what it is that you want. Instead of being jealous of them or thinking that, that you deserve it and they don't deserve it, you need to transform that way of thinking. It's about resisting the negative that comes up inside of you and allowing the positive to come forward. I'm friends with the monster beside of my bed. I get along with the voices inside of my head. You're trying to save me. Well, hold your breath, right? You think I'm crazy, but that's nothing. So it's, it's a situation of, of us, you know, others that don't understand the gifts that we have and, and the voices that we hear and the visions that we see and you think we're crazy and I want to fix you. You know, we're going to give you medication or we're going to send you to a hospital. There's something wrong with you. No, I'm friends with the monster inside of my head. Don't try and save me. I'm good with what I've got, right? So this is talking about the fact that these words, these beautiful words that this one spoke, think about how um, I, I thought about how we started this reading about what I was shown and then what has been coming to me all day and how I see things in advance, right? And it might, I see, yes, this one that caused all of this sadness to happen, this one that lied, this one that manipulated, this one that, that, that caused this pain to happen. And yet I see, I see past that and I saw the reason that that happened. And, and, and I battle with it because what would love say, what would love do? And I see in the future and I see it healed in the future. And yet we're not at that place yet. Right? We're not at that place where maybe even that one even cares that they did anything wrong. Maybe they, even, maybe they don't even feel sorry for what they've done. But I've seen further ahead. And so I sit in this place and, and, and all day today, you know, until I started the reading and, and, and the post that, that came up, it's no mistake that the pictures pop up as they do. And other people, you know, look at that story and, and I see something different. Um, a friend of mine posted a picture of, of a of a rock in Sedona and it's it's kind of graphic so I well we're all we're all old enough to see this 
the, the, the soft padding was, what do you see in this picture? Okay, I've seen, I know that spot. I saw it right away. I saw a man standing here, very aroused with the woman in front of him, a shorter woman, he's a taller man, and yet there's another man right on top of him, like literally crowding down. Look at that, like literally glued to his back. This is the one he's interested in, but what can you do with this one right there, right? Clearly he's aroused by that one, but this one's right on my ass, literally. So what do I do with that? And yet, I see past and I, and, and I think about that and I think about this message. And if you, and Spirit says, how do we fight? How do we fight that kind of energy? You know, the ones that are coming at you, the ones that are trying to block you, the ones that are doing um, mean things or saying, gossiping about you or talking behind your back or causing issues. I, and the message from Spirit is always, what would love say? What would love do? Well, when you fight fire with fire, you're just going to have a big fire. Everything's going to be on fire, right? But words have the power to change lives. We have to be careful about the words that we speak. We can make things better. We can make things worse. Why is this all whiting out? Like a ghost. Um, this is about doing the right thing no matter what. Right? Being grateful, being generous, being kind. You will be rewarded. Maybe not from that one, but you will be rewarded from spirit. And you feel good in yourself. Right? Because you've done the right thing. You've risen above. You've taken the high road. So it talks about speaking with kindness. It's, it's talking about at this time, there may be somebody in your life that needs assistance, that needs this energy, needs this positive, needs positive words, needs kind words right? Maybe as I said, the one who had done something wrong, the one who had, had, had turned their back on someone who didn't have the strength to stand up, or the one who maybe caused a distance because of jealousy, whatever the situation is, it's about being charitable. It's about not seeking revenge. It's about understanding that you can use your energy in a positive way to bring about a positive resolution. And as I was getting the cards ready, I put my my phone on this thing on this box right so i can have it up tall enough so that i can talk to you guys and as i do that i have to move my my cards to the side and this one deck the the angels gods and goddesses was sitting on top and the cards all slid and i grabbed them all but one card fell into the blinds and i knew that that one card was a message for me and the message is god of conflict resolution and the message is you're being encouraged to walk away from a current conflict they're not saying, take them to court. They're not saying, that what I said for a reason. That I said for a reason. Because I heard in my head, my own mother said that to me. When my brother stole my inheritance and did some stuff, I heard, I didn't know what I was meant to do. And I heard that night an audio message, and my mother said, don't take your brother to court. I'll take care of it. And so I dropped it. And it was a pretty expensive thing to drop. <laughs> a lot. So at, I said that for a reason. You're being encouraged to walk away from a current conflict, and that may mean not taking someone to court. Because you have to ask yourself, in the end, what is the benefit of that? It could literally completely 100% destroy a family. It doesn't matter if somebody has done something wrong. It doesn't matter. Now, I'm not saying in every instance it's for you to make this decision, but if this is something that rings, rings true to you, um, you got to think of what, 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 what is the benefit of it? You know, how long would it be? How long and drawn out? Um, what different things are going to come to light? What is the, the stress upon yourself? What is the benefit? What are you going to get from it? Is it worth it in the long run? But whatever the situation is, if you're asking spirit, spirit is telling you walk away from a current conflict. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. It's a sign of trust that, even if you've lost something, spirit will replace it with something better. It's also that they have put this conflict in front of you in order to show you that's not where you're meant to be. You're meant to walk away from that. You may have thought, great, everything was going along great. Now this has happened. Now what happens? You're supposed to walk. It's time to take a walk. It's time to leave. Walk. And this way you will be guided to your true path. So bless everyone concerned. I wish you well on your journey. Blessings on your journey. Gotta go. That's the message. And spirit wants you to detach from this situation and allow positive opportunities that are going to come to you in, as a result. Because basically, kind of like what my mom said, 
walk away, don't take your brother to court, we'll see that other things happen. Now I went on my path and, and, I, and it was hard on me and I had to do different things and yet the experiences were so enriching and it brought, there was a reason everything happened as, as it did. Does that look, in, look like anybody to you? Correct for neutrality on all levels. What is the message? Now, if I just heard call 911. So if this is an abusive situation, don't fight, don't stay, walk away, call for help. Or get out of there. I just heard that. Okay. Travel. Walk away. Somebody needs to leave. And what's interesting about this is this wise one is carrying this babe on their back to safety. And in the background, if you look up close here, there's a wise man, that spirit, holding up the lantern, holding up the light, looking and looking in the background. In the background, you see the castle. This one came from probably an opulent place. But in that castle, there are people that are about to lose their head. Off with your head, right? Those are religious leaders standing there about to execute this one. And so spare yourself. It's time to go. It's time to go. Safe passage. And it's literally safe travel. This is St. Christopher that's going to help you. Where is my St. Christopher medal? I just thought of that. It's gone. It's gone. I knew there was something missing from my chain. My St. Christopher medal is gone. Wow, that's a loud message. But I'm safe, right? Whoever this is, it's time you were being told to walk away from a conflict situation. It's time to leave. This one is carrying you on their shoulders. This babe is being carried away. And there's growth coming from the staff. So there's new beginnings. Something, whatever you've left behind, there's going to be growth. There's going to be something new coming of it. Whatever it is that you need in order to help you on this on this trip, like me, I'm going to Sedona in a week, right? Whatever you need as far as hotel. As far as money for while you're gone, gas, safety on the road, it's all going to be provided for you. You ask spirit for it. Ask spirit. But you're being told that, that there's your answer. If you were wondering in the situation, 911, right? Call someone. Is somebody going? Does somebody need to help you out of there? Call. 911. Doesn't have to be call the police. It could be call a friend, right? Call, call someone that you know will be there for you. Remember? It could even be someone, maybe, oh, I bet they're mad at me. Well, right? I might be mad at you, but I'm going to hold that umbrella. Come climb under my umbrella. It's raining. It's raining. And I said I'd always be a friend to the end. Climb under my umbrella. I'm going to go. You want to come? I'll take you with me. Right? I'm carrying that babe with me. And there's new beginnings. But it's time to go. And that was the message that you just got. Right? Walk away from that situation and, and recognize that you're going to be safe. Maybe that's another message. You know, I'm, I'm worried about my safety, like my physical safety. But Spirit says you're going to be safe. But you have to you have to take the advice that you're given. Now when Spirit, you know, you ask, pray for advice, and you pray for, for help, it, you may not get the advice that you think. I mean, not the advice. Well, yeah, the advice, the answer. Like you may say, uh, I'm praying for, for this job to come through. I'm praying for this lump sum of money so I can do blah, blah. And Spirit's saying, no, it's time to walk away now from that situation, right? Your transportation can be taken care of. Now, it doesn't have to be hairy scary. This, according to this message that we got, it pretty much is, it's pretty rotten, right? It was pretty rotten. Um, there was a difficult situation. There is someone, what was the last message? Someone needs your help. Someone may need kind words at this time. Someone may need for you to be understanding and empathetic because they've gone, they're, they're, they're coming out of a conflict. Holy crumb, sacred union. Okay, babe, I'm the one. You call me. Go with me. Because a partnership is blessed for greatness. This is a sacred union. And this one is coming out of a conflict situation. And that last message told us that someone is in need of help. Right? And then call. 911. Call. I'll be there. And then safe travel. It's time to go. Holy crap. All of this. And I just, literally somebody just posted on my computer. Yup. Right there. Right? Right? So pay attention to all of these, all of these messages. Now, if you don't have a hairy, scary situation going on in your life, Spirit is saying that it might be time for you to take a trip. It might be time for you to, you know, it may not be a hairy, scary situation. It might just be stressful. It might just be a toxic situation. It might be that you need a, a break, right? And if you've been wondering, you know, is it, would this be a good time to go on a vacation to just relax? The answer is yes. And the answer is now, right? Is there a certain place maybe that you have been drawn to go to? You've been thinking about uh, about work, figuring something out about work. 
Um, is there someone that you love that you would like to visit? Are you somewhere else and you'd like to visit? Like I said, I'm going to go stay and check out this little house that I'm supposed to look at, right? So this is validation to start putting your plans in motion. And it's interesting because when you do that, things start moving very quickly, right? So... I'm just hearing. That's amazing to me. Conflict situation and sacred union. Wow. So if you are someone who is not in the middle of a conflict and you chose this, um, it could be someone close to you, right? That needs your help. Um, but this is also talking about, have you considered, you know, going and checking a place out for business, right? And this is a, a sacred union, a partnership destined for success. So it could be a partnership as well. Uh, for me, it, it's loud. Something must have gone wrong in my, my brain. All the chemicals in my veins. Feeling all the highs, all the pain. I'm seeing red, not thinking straight. Seeing red, angry. You want to get away from the angry words, right? You want gentle, compassionate, loving words. The sacred union. You're being asked to walk away from a conflict to a blessed partnership. You're all I need. It's you, babe. There you are, babe. It's you, babe. Okay, I'm going to wrap it at this because this is pretty freaking loud for me. I could run, but, but it would be useless. It's you, babe. Okay? It's you, babe. All right. With that, I'll let you guys go. I'm going to upload this and uh, put this reading out. I don't know if... Uh, a lot of times, uh, I think these messages sometimes are, are just for myself. I, I don't know that my twin even watches anything to do with social media but sometimes we just get an, um, an idea of something that's coming because of the messages that pop up because that was I thought an accident but there are no accidents right everything happens for a reason all right love you guys we'll speak soon